Morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, welcome to today's live OECD Green Talk on the Gender Environment Nexus, Integrating a Gender Lens in Environmental Climate Policies. My name is Krzysztof Michalak. Uh, I'm the acting head of the Finance, Investment and Global Relations Division at the OECD Environment Directorate. And then I have the pleasure of moderating today's event. First, let me just give you a quick rundown of our agenda and give some housekeeping rules. Uh, first, to kick us off, we'll have the opening remarks from Joe Tyndall, Director of the Environment, uh, Director of Diversity. After uh, Joe's presentation, uh, we will have uh, the introduction of the OECD work on gender and environment, which will provide a background for a discussion. After this, we will hear the experience from the member countries on policies that uh, have been put in place to better integrate gender in environmental climate policies. Following these interventions, everyone will have a chance to ask the question. So certainly I would like to invite everyone to use the Zoom question and answer option and formulate your questions and then put them there. We will pick them up and then we'll try to as address as, as many as possible. I believe now we are ready to start, and I'm really had the honor to give the floor to Mrs. John Tyndall, Director of the Environment, directed for some opening remarks. Joe, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Christoph, and uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Uh, I'm really pleased to introduce this talk on the gender environment nexus. It is a subject very dear to my heart. Um, we know the impacts of environmental degradation and climate change are not gender neutral because women often start out with uh, predetermined economic vulnerabilities. That means the environment and climate change affect them differently from men. For example, in rural communities, the discrimination against women takes the form of limited access to natural resources, barriers to decent work and finance, and shouldering a disproportionate burden of unpaid work. Now, all of these factors limit women's ability to prepare for and respond to environmental shocks. It also adds time and effort to their responsibilities in responding to crises. For example, in needing to, to travel much further to find water supplies uh, in times of drought. On the other hand, in developed economies, women tend to be overrepresented in low income groups. And these are unfortunately also the groups more frequently affected by pollution uh, uh, in cities and as well as other environmental crises. Now this paints a bit of a grim picture. How can it still hold? How can this still be the case when we know that both gender and the environment issues are, are top priorities on the international agenda? And more importantly, what are we missing? One thing that always struck me when I was directly involved in the climate negotiations was that although the number of women climate negotiators was respectably high, the closer you got to the senior official level, the more the gender equation started to shift. And I'm sure this has an impact on the negotiating process. So how to deal with what's missing? As the title of today's event suggests, a better recognition of the gender environment nexus would be a key first step. And I'm sure our expert speakers today are going to explore the question in depth and discuss the mutually reinforcing links between uh, gender and climate change. I want to emphasize one message, which we feel pretty strongly about here at the OECD, namely that we need the right data. A recent OECD survey showed that uh, 21 out of the 38 uh, member countries of the OECD report that gender aspects are considered at least some of the time in their environmental policy making. However, only 11 do so systematically. Countries need to do better in mainstreaming gender in their environmental pol policies. And that means making sure all indicate indicators and data can be disaggregated to get that, uh, um, that gender uh, uh, perspective. It's the only way 
policymakers can effectively address the disproportionate adverse effects climate change has on women. We're collaborating closely within the OECD Secretariat, so I'm just going to quickly conclude by highlighting three recent papers jointly produced by uh, GenderNet and Environet. One on development finance for gender responsive climate action, one showing development assistance data. Uh, um, the trends there, uh, which is called ODA for climate, biodiversity and gender equality, a snapshot, and a third paper mapping and analyzing DAC members' policy frameworks and financing efforts to address the gender environment nexus. So there's a lot of work and a lot of interest and a lot of focus um, on these issues here at the OECD. And I look forward to listening to the specific so solutions that are going to be discussed today. Thank you very much and back to you, Christophe. Thank you very much, Joe, and um, thanks for being with us, uh, taking account of your very busy schedule, and certainly thanks for sharing your perspectives on some of the key challenges and some of the ways forward, and also the OECD uh, contribution to addressing some of the challenges. Thank you very much uh, uh, for this for this introduction. Uh, now let's move to another agenda item, and I would like to uh, give the floor to my colleagues at the Environment Directorate. Dimitri Xino and Valentina Belasi, who will briefly present the OECD work on the gender and environmental nexus. We'll start with Dimitra. Dimitra, please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much um, uh, for giving me the floor, Christoph. Uh, let me uh, share my screen and start the presentation. I hope everyone can see this now. Um, I'll go through the, uh, let's say, introduction very quickly because uh, Joe actually gave a very good uh, description of the gender environment nexus and the interlinkages between gender equality and environmental sustainability or climate change. Um, we see uh, differentiated impacts um, uh, of uh, that are can be attributed to inequalities in access to decision making, to land and natural resources, even to gendered social norms and institutions. Um, even though much of the um, ongoing work in academia and international organizations has been focusing on uh, uh, what we would consider the developing countries, uh, our work that we will be presenting today will be focusing mostly um, on um, on OECD member countries. Um, so um, our work um, in the Environment Directorate started in 2019, and in 2020 we organized our first uh, global forum on environment on mainstreaming gender and empowering women uh, for environmental sustainability in March 2020. It was a well attended event, and uh, it gave an opportunity to discuss. Uh, needed transformations in sectoral policies, uh, such as infrastructure, ur urban development, um, circular economy, uh, biodiversity, um, and renewable energy. Um, at the same period, um, the OECD released um, some um, um, a brochure on uh, gender and environmental statistics. It provides some, uh, some statistical information on uh, gender differences in health outcomes for exposure to environment-related risks, and also on women's uh, participation in developing green technologies. Um, our colleagues from the WISE directorates uh, working on statistics um, released a working paper on the distance between meeting gender-related targets under the Sustainable Development Goals framework. And this revealed that there, even for OECD countries, they still had a long way um, uh, until they can actually claim that they achieved uh, SDG 5 and as well as other gender related targets in, in some SDGs like employment, education, research, environment. Um, then we started a more systematic, let's say, way of working. Uh, Joe already made a reference to, to the survey that we conducted uh, on integrating gender in environmental policies. Uh, it was a, a well responded um, um, survey. Um, however, countries actually um, uh, provided different um, levels of replies, uh, which also shows that there's no um, um, 
that 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 each country has a different each OECD country has a different approach on on, on the topic. Um, so we what we saw from the from the survey is that the majority of the OECD countries do have some type of strategic framework on gender equality or gender mainstreaming um, that focuses on climate change or on agriculture and forestry, energy, green entrepreneurship, and green jobs. Um, the majority of the countries uh, do incorporate some aspects in risk assessments, in environmental policy uh, making, either ex ante or exposed, or they do take into account um, gender considerations in environmental budgeting through gender responsive budgeting initiatives. Um, however, as Joe mentioned, the main challenge um, identified was uh, is uh, collecting um, gender disaggregated data related to environmental policies or the environment more broadly, um, and that there is a lack of homogeneity on the type of data that is that is collected and also on the way that it is used. Um, then in um, Mar in May 2021. Uh, we released a report on gender and the environment, uh, building evidence and policies to achieve the SDGs. Um, the report argues that gender equality and environmental goals are mutually reinforcing. It has a, it reviews the environment-related SDGs from the perspective of the nexus, goal by goal. And um, it is the first OECD publication that addresses the, the nexus linking its past research including comprehensive data inventory and also has a global coverage so it covers OECD and non-OECD countries um, as uh, we we uh, we saw from the report um, we saw that only 20 of the 231 uh, unique environment related indicators of the SDG framework can be disaggregated by gender or are categorized as environmental indicators relevant to gender policies uh, there is a big data gap, as we said, on the nexus, even at the SDGs level, and the, that there are large labor gaps in environment sensitive sectors, including agriculture, energy, water uh, collection and supply, uh, transport, waste collection, um, and forestry. Um, to leverage uh, the nexus um, through an integrated um, policy framework, um, uh, the report proposes uh, to mainstream gender in environment related policies at the national and local level. So taxation, budgeting, subsidies, uh, sectoral policies such as infrastructure, for example, um, to integrate uh, gender environment considerations into transboundary policies like trade, investment, development, um, and to strengthen gender equality and women's um, empowerment horizontally to the promotion of equal rights, um, decision-making, public consultations. Um, as a follow-up to, to this report, we, we did a, a country uh, report uh, with the um, voluntary contributions from Greece uh, on empowering women in the transition towards green growth in, in Greece. This uh, report uh, released in July 2022 analyzes the, the nexus it evaluates the impact of environmental and climate policies to gender equality in women's economic empowerment and also assesses whether national uh, gender equality policies advance environmental sustainability. Uh, the assessment concluded to 30 recommendations under the five target areas that you can see here on, on the slide. Um, it, um, I'll go through them quickly. I'd say that issues uh, such as tackling um, energy poverty, introducing gender sensitive climate adaptation in urban design and applying uh, gender sensitive uh, environmental impact assessments were absent in, in, in the case of Greece. But at the same time, we saw that women's role in phasing out fossil fuel dependency is partly recognized and uh, some measures on linking it with the women's employment are being, is being introduced. Um, there's also the case of women's role in sustainable uh, agriculture and forestry in introducing more or in more strategically engaging women into STEM studies and careers um, so that they can be more engaged into eco innovation and green budgeting. Um, and on circular economy, uh, it's, there's more a link with green entrepreneurship and promoting gender sensitive um, green public procurement. On the side of the gender equality uh, policies uh, that um, the research introduced, uh, we see that um, there is uh, there that a targeted approach towards um, uh, green skills and vocational training or the science and technology programs and gender sensitive green recovery measures would actually elevate the role of women into into introducing um, into produce promoting green, the green economy. 
and of course, um, guaranteeing women's participation in public consultations uh, as well. And, and of course, gender budgeting and financing, which could be better reflected uh, um, into the, the policy arena. Um, these recommendations, even though they were uh, addressed uh, for Greece, uh, they can also be transferable, so they could also be used for other uh, countries. So I would uh, recommend that um, people do have a look at, um, at the report from here. Um, the other piece of work that we've been doing in the Environment Directorate uh, is on gender sensitive and green measures during the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, the OECD Green Recovery Database um, is a tool that uh, has been used um, over the, the COVID uh, um, crisis and it is uh, measuring um, the, green reco the, the COVID recovery um, measures with likely environmental implications, positive or negative ones. Uh, we did a gender analysis on, on, on this for the for 44 countries, so we see members and key partners, sorry. And um, we saw that um, uh, there's a limited presence of gender sensitive measures in the database. Only 2.5% of the about 700 measures assessed uh, were gender relevant. Uh, we saw that um, half of the measures uh, were related to skills and training and are in the subsidies, and the majority um, of the measures were uh, um, being implemented nationally, either as economy-wide measures or sectoral ones. Um, only half of the gender-relevant reco green recovery measures were attributed to a specific uh, sector like buildings or energy. Um, however, there were sectors that were with so no gender sensitive ones like agriculture, forestry, industry, waste management, and gender re relevant uh, measures seem to target mainly climate change mitigation and air pollution, and very little uh, on adaptation and biodiversity. Now this led us to do some joint work with the UNDP and UN Women. We joined forces under the Feminist Action for Climate Justice Action Coalition of the Generation Equality Forum. And we have uh, we produced um, a COVID global gender response tracker with a green lens. Uh, the tracker maps uh, gender sensitive and green recovery measures for over 200 uh, countries and territories or the, the lack of, of such measures. Um, the, the idea, the, the picture that we get from the, the tracker is similar to the one that um, we saw in the green for the green recovery database uh, that um, there's, there are limited measures, however, uh, there are innovative and promising policies that promote both environmental objectives and gender equality and that have been introduced in a variety of countries and contexts, uh, signaling the opportunity and necessity for policy learning and uptake um, across sectors. Other current work, and I will only briefly mention it because we're running out of time, or I'm running out of time. Um, there are two um, environment indicators that have been identified. I mentioned them at the beginning, mortality rates from air pollution and development of green technologies that we've been working on in the Environment Directorate. And we did just try, try to do some work on lack of a harmon uh, on, on an indicator on exposure to environmental risk, but the lack of harmonized socio-demographic data makes it a bit more difficult. Uh, we did release a paper on women's leadership in environmental action covering public and private sector. And also at the latest um, uh, LAC, uh, uh, Regional Policy Dialogue on Environmental Sustainability for Latin America and the Caribbean, we did have a special session on climate change adaptation on, on gender, uh, which again uh, concluded that, as we said, on that uh, gender exante and exposed analysis, uh, which integrates women's role in adaptation policies, is crucial. For future work, uh, we are considering in the in the Environment Directorate on, I mean, the idea is to mainstream gender in work across the directorate, and that's that's the main plan. Uh, how we're doing it, um, we are considering um, introducing gender elements or gender considerations into the environmental performance reviews and green growth policy reviews. Um, there are some um, uh, data that we have collected through the household consumption survey, and we are trying to see whether there is interest uh, to advance work on, on, on these. And also as well for, as an example, the willingness to pay to avoid chemicals related negative health impacts uh, includes uh, gender as one of the socioeconomic variables um, for consideration. And now I'll pass the floor to Valentina to take us through the work on sustainable finance and gender. 
Thank you, Dimitra. Um, so last year, the OCD Environment Directorate published a working paper on supporting women's empowerment through green finance, um, green policies and finance, which looked, um, as the title suggests, into three main topics, uh, gender integration in green policies, first green finance and green infrastructure. So here I would like to give you a brief presentation of the chapter on um, gender responsive um, sustainable finance and green finance. Um, and the key messages that the, the chapter um, included were that to date, uh, gender and environmental related considerations have really been considered uh, in silos in different um, um, sustainable finance approaches as two different and distinct lenses that are integrated separately in either financial instruments or, or investment approaches. Um, so if, if um, the goal is really to make the financial system work for the people and the planet, um, we need to really start thinking about how to apply an integrated lens that can um, draw connections between both green environmental objectives and gender equality and also other social objectives. And as Dimitra um, already mentioned, there are important synergies uh, between the, these different uh, sustainability objectives and um, further efforts are really needed to try and bring them together and, and break those uh, silos. And to give you a concrete example of these silos, I can, if you can, if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, this is an example of how gender integration um, is done in ESG investing and ESG ratings and metrics. Um, in, the, in this slide, you can see that there are these uh, three different um, ESG pillars. The E pillar is the environment, the S pillar is the social, and the G pillar is the governance. And um, from an analysis of the different ESG ratings um, uh, methodologies, it's pretty clear that when looking at the E pillar, the metrics uh, do not really capture gender differentiated dimensions. In the S pillar, we often have metrics on gender diversity in the workforce and rarely um, or sometimes the gender pay gap. Uh, and in the G pillar of these um, uh, ratings, um, we often have metrics related to gender balance on companies' boards or management and uh, gender-related discrimination. So we see that in this, um, in this space, there are several challenges, such as, first of all, the low transparency of ESG rating methodologies, which are not always accessible and uh, are often quite high level. Um, there's limited and often incomparable information on the metrics and weights. Um, as some of you are, are maybe aware that there's a wide variety of ESG ratings providers and there's a lack of comparability across uh, these providers in terms of how the methodologies uh, are developed and the metrics are constructed. And um, even looking at how these ratings are then used um, to invest. So looking at the different ESG investing approaches, uh, we see that there's limited inclu inclusion of gender ac uh, across the range of, of investment approaches or investment um, strategies, because often investors focus on uh, so-called gender lens investing, which um, exclusively and explicitly focus on gender equality. Um, and they do these through like thematic investing or impact investing, uh, but there's a whole range of other investment strategies such as screening, tilting, integration or uh, engagement with companies that, that that can include a gender dimension. And so um, what can be done to kind of address these challenges is first um, improving improve, improvements on the metrics on the three pillars, essentially. Second, increasing transparency and comparability of the metrics and the methodologies. Um, and third, um, really try to mainstream gender across all the different uh, investment strategies um, and understand that they're not mutually exclusive and that they can be used um, simultaneously. And uh, in the report, there's also further analysis on how gender is integrated into, yeah, um, into other financial instruments, into financial instruments, and also um, looking into 
uh, various um, public sustainable finance policies. And if we can go, yes, to the next slide, please. Um, I just wanted to quickly flag that there is um, some follow up upcoming work uh, that uh, we at the OECD are doing together with uh, OJK, the Indonesian Financial Services Authority, with a view to provide capacity building on how sustainable finance can advance women's empowerment in Indonesia. Uh, so there will be a series of workshops uh, with local financial institutions um, and other stakeholders to try and raise awareness and build capacity on uh, the linkages between these two. And I leave it here uh, for the sake of time. Thank you very much. Um, in case you would like to know more about this or for any uh, more information, please don't hesitate to reach out. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Dimitra and Valentina, for those extremely interesting uh, presentations and, and some of the insights of the reports uh, of the, the vast <clears throat> analysis that has been done under the OECD. And certainly, be before we go to the next agenda item, I'll just to, to thank everyone so far for using the question and answer um, opportunity not only ask questions, but also share your, your views and your thoughts. That's very much appreciated. And certainly also to answer some of the question is that we will share the presentation and the recording of this meeting uh, tomorrow. So then you will you can you can certainly further study all the analysis that has been have been mentioned. So let's now uh, get back to our agenda and then I would I have a Privilege and honor to uh, to introduce and, and and give the floor to Anna Puy, who is a senior advisor on gender equality at the Spanish Ministry for the Ecological Transition and the Demographic Challenge. Uh, Anna has been supporting work on better mainstreaming gender in the ministry's work and also in the sectoral policies. So, Anna, uh, I invite you now to share to share your views, your and your government views on the gender environmental access and what concrete steps uh, has been taken to integrate those, those in policies. Anna, you have to go. Okay. Uh, let me first thank you to, to OECD and, and to the particularly to the organizers of the event uh, for, for this strategic topic in, in, in this green talk and for the invitation to be here today. It, it's really a pleasure. Uh, the Spanish government is very much aware of, of the crucial need to better facilitate synergies between environmental policies and, and gender equality policies, as it has been said, because these policies are their, and their goals are, are mutually reinforcing. Consequently, stronger efforts and commitments are being made on the one hand to better integrate the, the gender dimension in the Spanish environmental and, and climate policies at, at national level. We have made significant improvements since the, the, the survey made a few years ago, uh, and, and, and you will see. I will give you just five examples on, on, on it. Uh, first, equality uh, between women and men is one of the guiding principles of the Spanish law on climate change and, and energy transitions, transition adopted into, in 2021. It also clearly requires that the instruments aimed at implementing and developing the just transition strategy will consider the gender approach. It also requires a gender balanced composition, both for the experts committee on climate change and energy transition, and also for the citizens assembly on, on climate change. Uh, Consonant to this, uh, gender is mainstream in the Spanish just transition strategies. A strategic, a strategic objective, but also across several measures and in the impact assessment provisions. It also requires considering women's participation in the just transition agreements. Therefore, the Institute for uh, Just Transition and the Institute for Women sign a joint protocol to promote women's entrepreneurship as well as to improve the employability of, and working conditions of, of women in, in those territories affected by, by the energy transition. Another key example is the, the National Climate Change Adaptation Plan till 2030, in which the gender approach is one of the cross-cutting dimensions for all the sectoral lines of interventions related to climate change, such as energy, water, mobility, tourism, education, research and innovation, etc. 
uh, this implies a key gender focus not only on the differential impacts, interests, and, and, and needs that women and, and men, boys and girls uh, can or may have, but also on the on the crucial role of women exchange agents and leaders for better adaptation policies and, and actions. It identifies specific measures for the collection of sex disaggregated data and the development of specific indicators. This is also consonant to another key example, the Spanish long-term strategy for decarbonization in 2050, which includes a specific section two on gender equality as one of the cross-cutting factors for all the sectoral areas involving a clima, climate neutral economy. Action lines considered in this section are gender mainstreaming in the different stages of policies, programs, and projects, the integration of, of gender dimension, of the gender dimension in, in the analysis of consumption and mobility patterns, different activities uh, aim at attracting the interest of girls and women in developing educational and professional career in these fields. And uh, intersectional gender perspectives in the improvement of gender policy and labor settings, not only to attract, but also to retain talent in these sectors, particularly in, in career development and, and participation in, in decision-making bodies. As a final key example of, of this approach, it is worth to, to highlight that uh, gender equality is one of the four cross-cutting lines of action in the Spanish recovery plan for all the levels and components, including those more related to, to environmental policy. Therefore, several gender mainstreaming usual procedures are required where appropriate for all the reforms and investments made within the recovery plan. For instance, sex disaggregated data and gender indicators, gender responsive uh, public procurement, or intersectional gender approaches for considering the special needs of rural women, migrant and refugee women, old women in single person households, etc. And moreover, for the components more related to the environmental goals, the Spanish recovery plan includes explicit gender considerations specifically applied, for instance, to energy poverty on housing rehabilitation, to the conservation and restoration of ecosystems and biodiversity, or to the implementation and integration of renewable energies, etc. These are five main examples on, on the gender approach incorporated to green policies. But on the other hand, the green approach has been integrated in the strategic framework for the Spanish national gender equality policies. Therefore, our present third strategic plan for, for the effective equality of women and men in 2025 includes more than 20 measures on, on ecological sustainability. These measures are consonant to the gender approach already integrated in environmental policies, like the examples I have just mentioned, but also to three commitments made by the Spanish government to the Feminist Action for Climate Justice Action Coalition and the Degeneration Equality Forum, which are gender equality, empowerment of women and girls in the ecological transition in Spain, driving the integration of the gender approach in water resources management, promotion of greens of women's green entrepreneurship and women's entrepreneurship in rural areas with a special interest in the, in the section between these two. Consequently, some measures in the in this national strategic plan for the effective equality of, of women and men are related to these topics, including some which uh, specifically address the production and dissemination of gender indicators. For instance, a new biennial publication on, on women in the ecological transition that we are planning to launch next year. But also another one of these measures is promoting the formulation of gender indicators to obtain data on green entrepreneurship and rural entrepreneurship. We have just published and launched this month the first report and a, data, a database on women's green entrepreneurship and women's, rural, uh, women's entrepreneurship in, in rural areas. The executive summary of this report has been published in English too for, for anyone interested. I hope all these examples can give you an, an overall idea of, of the complementarity of these mutually reinforcing agendas in our national policies. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna, for this uh, very interesting uh, presentation. And now uh, 
after after we heard from from the recent work from the exp experience from from Spain. Uh, now let's then move to answering some of the questions that have been <clears throat> that have been put. Uh, uh, and again, thanks thanks everyone uh, for for sharing them. Let me just start with with one uh, to Anna. And Anna, you, you mentioned this this recent report on women's green entrepreneurship and women women's entrepreneurship in the rural areas. If you could just bring one or two uh, recommendations or very specific actions that 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 you will be kind of picking this up and putting into the policy making of very concrete measures that could could then be implemented on the ground. Uh, yes, many lessons have been learned uh, and, and some commitments and recommendations come from, from this report. For instance, that uh, uh, we have to keep updating the educator systems and the database, as well as promoting further collaborations with other bodies in Spain, the European Union, the OECD and the, and the United Nations framework. Also to keep strengthening the integration of, of the gender dimension in our funding programs and in any public policy that can contribute to close the, the, the gender gaps, gaps that have been identified in, in, in the report. Additionally, to, to conduct also further studies to, to better understand the, the reasons behind those gender gaps, as well as to identify and, and disseminate uh, good practices. Uh, and finally, it, to keep uh, reinforcing the, 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 the the public support to women's entrepreneurship in, in any field or territory, considering for it the, the, the framework already developed on this matter by the OECD and the European uh, Union. Uh, we have uh, uh, big uh, gender gaps uh, in uh, that have been identified in, in, in the report. Uh, I, I don't remember if I mentioned before that the, the, the executive summary is translated into English, so anyone who doesn't speak Spanish can, can, can have a look to it too. Uh, but we have found, for instance, that only one out of 10 green entrepreneurs in Spain in 2022 are women. And this also means that only five out of every hundred business women in Spain are engaging in activities compared to 26 out of every hundred business women. And in the European Union as a whole, only one out of every 16 green entrepreneurs in 2021 uh, were women. Uh, moreover, only eight of uh, uh, EU countries have a significant number of, of women entrepreneurs in activities, among which Spain is in the, in the second position in, in quantity and, and, and percentage behind Italy. Uh, the intersection between green and, and, and rural entrepreneurs usually increases the gender gaps in Spain, only one out of every 33 rural women entrepreneurs in 2022 are dedicated to, to, to green activities, compared to one out of every four rural businessmen. This also means that only six out of 100 rural green entrepreneurs in Spain are women. So you can see that it's, it is big, uh, enormous, dramatic uh, gender gaps. However, some, some good news come from the, the analysis of data on, on, on social security contributions to the special regime for social employed workers in the, of the social security in, in 2021. And it shows that the average contribution base of self-employed women in green activities is higher than that of the female counterparts in the, in the rest of economic activities. But most importantly, it is similar to that of the male self-employed in green activities, including in rural settings. This means that it closes then the typical gender and, and rural gaps that persist in the, in the average contribution base for, for the rest of economic activities. So this is really good news and, and it makes more attractive uh, uh, in our uh, view this, this field. For entrepreneurship. Thank you. Yeah, that's Sorry, it. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Please go ahead. Yes, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, we'll come back with, with uh, another question. But and now let, let, let me move to another to a question that was a very specific question that was posed uh, to Dimitra. So Dimitra, what are the recommendations for indigenous women in least developing nations? for the environmental sustainability. So how ind indigenous women can play a vital role for social and environmental sustainability? Um, 
Thanks, it's a very interesting question. Um, first of all, um, the OECD has been doing some work on indigenous communities. It refers um, mainly to indigenous communities within OECD countries, but um, the gender and environment report that I mentioned earlier does cover indigenous communities role uh, in, um, in environmental policies and more specifically the role of women within these in, um, indigenous communities. Um, what we acknowledge through the report is that uh, women are traditionally active in, in, um, in ecosystem uh, conservation, preservation and maintenance of traditional knowledge, which is very key. Um, and they are also um, usually the voice in, in, in this group. So they are the ones heading the, let's say, uh, climate action movement. Um, what uh, we see is that the role of women within small scale um, uh, farming and sustainable agriculture needs to be reinforced uh, and protected. This is usually something that traditional uh, indigenous communities do, especially in rural um, areas um, in developing countries. And what was um, has also been uh, proposed uh, through the, the report is um, an integrated um, impact assessment uh, framework that um, covers gender, uh, youth, indigenous communities, other vulnerable groups, and also environmental considerations, because that uh, that will uh, that will allow for better uh, policy making. I mm -hmm. hope I answered the question. Thank you. Thank you, Dimitra. And then there is a, yet another question very specific to your comment, which is, uh, Dimitra, what do you mean when you say that women's economic empower, empowerment is male dominated? Uh, I don't think I said that, or if I did, I'm sorry. But what I meant is that um, what we've been looking in the in the report and also in the in the in the Greek case studies and in our analysis more general is um, uh, women's economic empowerment in mainly male dominated sectors. So uh, sectors where you have at least fifty one percent of the of the workforce being male, and we see that uh, women are. Uh, especially um, out of sectors like um, uh, even agriculture in Europe, actually, to be honest. Um, they're not uh, necessarily the, the majority, even though it is in some cases, um, in, some, in some countries around the world, but um, in construction or anything that has to do with um, um, manufacturing, um, women are, are excluded. So we're looking at, at we've been looking at this specific uh, section, uh, energy, for example. And this actually links to what Anna was saying earlier on, um, on, uh, on uh, uh, women's role and, and some other comments that I've been seeing in, in, in the chat, um, which are mainly positions, but it, it, it has to do with um, um, that, that for the future and for the green jobs that will be created in the future, um, we need to uh, support women now because they're already excluded from 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 the sectors that will be um, that will be transformed. Therefore, we need to make sure that they are already they they cover the gap that already exists and manage to uh, in to go into the new sectors that will be created. Okay, thank you very much. And now. <clears throat> A um, couple of questions to Valentina. And first is if you could uh, please describe if, in, in a bit more detail, but not to detail, we don't have that much time, but just a bit more about the E, S, and the G pillars. And then if you could also refer to some of the indicators and metrics that are currently used to measure gender equality performance in that particular sustainable finance space. Sure. Um, so on the environment, social and governance pillar, um, as I mentioned before, um, there are different ESG providers. These are usually um, private, uh, private providers that construct um, ESG ratings which, uh, and metrics, which can then be used um, to, for instance, rate or select companies um, to invest in. And um, as I said before, gender integration ESG metrics is quite um, scattered at the moment. The environmental pillar 
it does not um, capture gender desegregation at all. Uh, whereas in the other two pillars, we have um, different metrics used by different providers. So what's uh, what's needed there is um, to better develop these metrics and also to make them comparable across providers. And in terms of um, measurement, we see that oftentimes um, progress in terms of um, gender equality is measured uh, in terms of, for, in for instance, the share of women um, in companies' boards or share of women in companies' uh, management, senior management positions. And this is, of course, very important that many countries um, around the world are even um, putting forward policies um, or quotas to increase um, and encourage the representation of women on companies' boards. But there's also a wide variety of other issues um, that are important that they needs to be measured. Otherwise, we will not be able to assess the real performance of a company or, or a project in terms of gender equality. And this um, includes, for example, how uh, women are represented uh, in the rest of the workforce, uh, the gender pay gap, um, policies, for instance, at, at the company level that can um, encourage women to, um, for example, take flexible approaches wherever needed, um, or uh, training and retainment, because often it's it's oftentimes seen that, especially after pregnancy, women um, have issues either getting back to their jobs or progressing. Um, so all, also um, even broader gender implications um, in, in the relationships with other uh, communities or suppliers is, is a very important indicator. And these are often uh, disregarded uh, whenever looking at um, performance. Okay, thank you very much. And <clears throat> before uh, going to the next question, I would like to acknowledge and, and thank the colleagues from the WWF International for raising this very important issue of, uh, of the role of gender in the context of international trade in wild fauna and flora. And that includes illegal wild trade. So that certainly will take, take a good note of it and, and will consider in our further work. And then the question that then I would just suppose to any of, uh, of, of you who, could, who, who wish to answer it is about um, the experience, your experience on how uh, to sustain interest of, of women responders towards the social enterprise and the queen advocacy work, as there is a clear gender gap between men and women in business activities. I don't know who'd like to pick up that, that, that one. I could um, yeah. I could give it a go. Um, well, um, that's true. And um, the working paper that we did work on uh, on environmental leadership, we did um, um, say that. Oh, I mean, through the, the research, the existing research shows that um, there is a differentiated approach uh, between men and women in in decision making um, uh, positions in 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 the private sector. We do see. If I can say it, um, a more let's say sustainable approach from 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 women, um, the that uh, would mean that uh, the best way to to handle the situation is to actually have uh, more gender diversity in, at the um, at the decision making level, even in the business sector, um, because that way um, you can actually have different type of leadership or different prioritization. Um, maybe Valentina can, uh, can add a bit more on, on, on what she's seen in the finance uh, sector. No, just seeing very similar trends essentially. Um, so I think a long way to go there as well. Thank you. Anna, any? Yes, I, I would reinforce something I said before that, uh, for instance, gender responsive uh, public procurement, at least from the public sector, we have a, a great instrument to, to incentivize 
uh, gender equality policies and, and, and targets in, in, in the private sector, uh, who wants to, to work for the for the public in this private sector, who wants to, 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 to work for the public sector. Also in the funding programs as well, uh, using gender crosses, uh, and we are doing that in, in our funding programs. So uh, you can uh, incentivize or prioritize the proposals which come from mm -hmm. from uh, companies or from institutions, other kind of institutions that have a, a gender a, equality a record or that have a gender equality measures, uh, which are, uh, which have some are gender balance in their, in their decision making bodies, etc. So we can use that also to, to, to incentivize it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, the time is running. There, there are many questions. It looks like we need to arrange yet another opportunity to discuss and answer them. But let me just ask now, pose the, uh, the very concrete question uh, and challenging. In many countries, there are good policies, but in actual practice, either government or bureaucrats always ignore them. What to do in that situation? Anna? <laughs> capacity building i think this is a, 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 the main strategy this is a, a really facilitating facilitating factor but also a challenge uh, we are we are putting a stronger uh, efforts to to not only on on training uh, specific training courses but also mainstreaming gender in other courses not uh, on gender uh, but also uh, um, disseminating, elaborating and disseminating uh, guidance documents, checklists. Uh, sometimes the, the, the inner, some units are doing that for themselves and with the advice of the gender quality unit at the ministry. So all these things help, but of course, uh, gender training is not compulsory. So still there are some people who you know, have not been trained and sometimes in these units where they don't have people already with some experience or expertise in, in, in gender, it is more difficult for them to, to apply all these policies, which are in the, in the, in the strategic framework, or even in the law. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, another question, which is uh, also specific to the particular pollutant, type of pollutant. So there's a, a comment and question. So this year offers an opportunity to strengthen gender mainstreaming in regard to pollution crisis. In September, the World Chemicals Conference will negotiate a new framework of the chemicals management in Bonn. And then there are discussions uh, starting on a new science policy panel for chemicals, waste and pollution and especially in the new plastic treaty. What is the OECD planning in this regard? Dimitra, can you share the light uh, on Yes, um, um, I could uh, give it a try. Um, our colleagues in the Environment Directorate working on, on, on chemicals um, are actually uh, collaborating with um, quite a few international organizations and UN bodies um, on um, on um, the use uh, and, and um, um, monitoring of chemicals. Um, and also I know that I've, in the guidance that they're producing, they do try and they do tend to do some sex desegregated analysis and they do see, look at uh, specific um, effects of specific chemicals in, in specific uh, um, um groups uh, like pregnant women for example and fetuses and things like that there's already a lot of um, research on things like that um i uh do not know the more specifics on on this but uh, i'm sure that our colleagues um uh, would be happy to to answer to the question so if you want to forward them to, to send me an email i'll forward it to, to to them more specifically okay thank you and actually, there were quite a few questions in, in the chat related to data and statistics and data. And let me just bring one and, and I'll, I'll ask you to, to provide your views on. So it's it's often difficult to estimate the impact of, of climate change or assess environmental gender nexus to estimate the baselines for the project design and then to implement them simply because the data does not exist or we're not asking the right questions about the data. So how do we deal with this particular issue? And maybe also, Anna, you could 
refer to your uh, comment on the uh, uh, on the, your publication that you're planning to launch on women and and ecological transition what what data sources are you planning to consider and what kind of challenges you you see in this context okay we want to cover all the all the environmental areas but not only in terms of on, on, on employment or even education but also on consumption patterns but perceptions and attitudes. So for, for all that, I think we can use uh, existing surveys, uh, periodical surveys in our National Institute for Statistics, but also at Eurostat level, for instance. And we would also, where possible, also to attend the uh, OECD or, or UN level uh, uh, data too. Uh, regarding Eurostat and, and, and the national surveys, uh, the labor force surveys, or, or the one on living conditions uh, can be useful, but the, the, the surveys from the Eurobarometer, uh, there are many useful uh, 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 surveys we can use to study perceptions and attitudes uh, towards climate change, towards biodiversity, uh, towards, um, I don't know, the, even the green transition. There was a new one coming up last year on this topic. So uh, we just have to go and and, and you know, and, and explore all those data at national level, at, at the EU, uh, EU average level, and and, and see and, and start new series and, and follow up in two years the, the evolution of those, those data. I think uh, it's difficult to, to make uh, the, the gender analysis of this data, but some data are already available, and, and we just have to go and make the analysis and, and show and, and, and disseminate them. And, and they are found to be very useful. Uh, some colleagues tell us, you know, for, for when they have to prepare the gender impact reports for a law or for or for a budget, uh, these data once they they cannot start uh, to 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 analyze or create the data at the moment when they have to to run and, and to to all write all these documents. But if they are already available and um, uh, they they can be very useful also to evaluate the, the impact of our our policies afterwards. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I'm afraid I will need to come to a closure of this of the, our discussion, unfortunately, because there have been so many good questions and so many good answers. So uh, I think we should we should think of the opportunities to prolong our discussions. Maybe just at the end, I will refer to was one of the the um, uh, the points, the fact that was mentioned in the chat. Uh, from colleagues said that 12, only 12% 12 for heads of national environmental sector ministries in the UN members, those are women. And so men did do account for 88%. I would say the environment directorate could provide probably a good advice because here in our leadership, we have uh, at the position of the director and two deputy directors, we have women in place. Here yeah, in Spain that... too, uh, our minister and, and, and sir, vice president of the Spanish government is, is a woman too, Teresa Rivera. So we are happy uh, to, to, to share that too. So certainly, thanks, Anna, for bringing this, this in uh, to the good, to balance out the, the, uh, the accounts. Uh, but And then on this, let's then uh, finish on this positive note, but sir, sir is still recognizing there are many challenges to still address. And, I would like to, to use now this opportunity to thank everyone, uh, our presenters and discussants, and, and then the colleagues who, and participants who share their insights, their, their comments, their ideas in, in the chat. Uh, I apologize, we have not been able to answer all the questions, but as I said, we should continue our, our dialogue. Um, as I already mentioned that, uh, well, Dimitra mentioned, please don't hesitate to reach to us. Uh, then we'll certainly be the extremely uh, pleased to further exchange, provide further information about OECD work and, and our plans. Uh, please visit our, our website uh, that in, in which there will be a link to uh, the recording of this meeting and also some materials that that uh, that will um, that have been presented. So you should all the participants should be receiving a link uh, to the webinar uh, with the reply and the slides as well. I would like to thank everyone for uh, for your participation and let's continue our discussion. Have a great afternoon. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.